Hi guys. I'm Harvard dermatologist, Dr. Abby Waldman in Boston, Massachusetts. Today we're talking about the perfect skincare routine for your twenties. Now I'm a dermatologist. And when I was in my twenties, I was not even washing my face every night. I would fall asleep with my makeup on all the time. And I remember having my aha moment with face washing when I was in my early twenties and I was out with a girlfriend and we were staying over in a hotel. And at the end of the night, it was like three in the morning and I plopped on the bed, ready to go to bed. And she looks over at me in disgust. And she says, are you not washing your face? What are you doing? And I thought, huh? Ah, I guess you're supposed to wash your face every night, even at three in the morning when you come home late. So if you are already washing your face every night, congratulations, you are way ahead of the game. And if not, no worries, it is not too late to start. And maybe even someday you'll be a dermatologist. So today I'm gonna to be discussing not just face washing, but everything to have the perfect skincare routine to help you achieve a youthful radiant glow and also set up the habits in your 20s that's gonna pay dividends down the line in your 30s, 40s, 50s, and beyond. So if you're ready to take your skincare game to the next level, hit the subscribe button and let's get to it. So the 20s is a really critical time when your skin is changing. Basically, you may be starting to notice your first few wrinkles. You may still be getting breakouts because honestly, acne is not just for teenagers. You might be having some changes related to hormone changes and pregnancy. And so you want to get just like exercise and diet. It's really a time where you're going to start carving out your routine, sort of what you're going to do going forward. And that doesn't mean it's going to not grow or change, but that it's going to become habit and part of something that you're doing all the time so that you can have the skin that you really want. And so the first step is cleansing. And honestly, it's not so much about the product you're using. Really most gentle cleansers are going to do the trick. Face wash doesn't really need to be something special or expensive. It just needs to be plentiful and readily available so that if it's three in the morning and you're coming back at night, you're not tempted to skip. It has to be super easy to use. I literally put a bottle in every single bathroom, in every single shower to make it almost impossible for me to skip this step. And why, why do you need to wash your face? So on our skin, we have an entire microbiome. Basically there are bacteria, there are fungi, there are little parasites, little mites that take resident in our skin. And these are not bad. In fact, a lot of times they can be good. You can think of them kind of like the creatures in the forest, right? There are rabbits, there are deer, there are coyotes, and they're all living symbiotically in the forest. And the coyotes keep the deer population down. The deer make sure all the plants are all trimmed. And so everyone can live peacefully together. Washing your face basically keeps all the microbes at a level where they can all kind of live together happily on your face without your skin really caring at all. In fact, maybe your skin actually benefits from it. Now, if you don't wash your face, that can allow certain populations of these microbes to get out of hand. They build up and they just take over. It's like having a boom in the coyote population. They start wiping out the deer and the rabbits and even small pets, right? It's having a boom in the deer population. All of a sudden they've wiped out your hydrangeas. Similarly, when demodex or the mites that are on your skin, when their population bloom, your skin can react and become rosacea. When the bacteria that cause acne called P acne, when those get out of hand, your skin reacts and becomes acne. And when the fungus on your skin, usually a type called malassezia, when that blooms, then you can get what's called seborrheic dermatitis. You can get kind of greasy, oily skin. So whenever you're thinking about skipping washing your face at night, all you have to do is think about those mites piling up and taking over your skin, almost like a herd of deer taking over your garden. And hopefully that image will give you the impetus to drag yourself out of bed, get into the bathroom and wash your face. And besides the microbes, it's also just important to wash off the pollutants that get on your skin, the dirt that gets on your skin throughout the day, especially if you live in a city and there's lots of things that you're coming into contact with on your skin that you don't want to leave there because it can cause DNA damage. It can cause breakouts. Now, do you need to wash your face in the morning? I think this is a little bit debatable. Um, I do wash my face in the morning. I find that it's much easier to 
put on makeup when I have a clean face, put on my skincare with a clean face. I just really like it. You know, certainly if you have very dry, dry skin, it's fine to wash with just water and kind of rinse off. And so it's not imperative that you wash in the morning. And what products should you use? Really, any gentle cleanser is gonna do the trick. This is one by Cetaphil. This is one by La Roche-Posse that I like. They're very affordable. They're in the pharmacy, at least in the United States. And again, you wanna make it easy for yourself. Just have one in each bathroom. Make it so you really cannot miss this step. If you have acne, you can pick a cleanser that has salicylic acid or benzyl peroxide, but otherwise those products might be too irritating for your skin if you don't have acne. And in those cases, I would also only just use that once a day. Don't use that as a cleanser for twice a day. If you wear a makeup or sunscreen, which you should be wearing, um, you can do what we call a double cleanse, which is to say just remove your makeup. So you can do this with an oil cleanser or what I like and prefer, which is micellar water. This basically dissolves the makeup and then you can just wash with your gentle cleanser afterwards. So the next step then is now that you've washed your face, you want to moisturize and sunscreen. And you're a busy person. You do not need to do this in two steps. And so if you have oily skin or your skin's not particularly dry in general, honestly, you can just use a face sunscreen as your morning moisturizer. Most of these have moisturizing factors in them like ceramides or niacinamide. And so you don't need to use two products. If you have drier skin, then I would recommend picking a moisturizer moisturizer with sunscreen. The key is finding something with 30 SPF and it's broad spectrum. Whatever works for you, that is what you should do. Cause you, again, you want to do this every single day. And it's not just when it's sunny out, you want to do it when it's cloudy out, when it's winter time. For sunscreens that function well as a moisturizer, I like La Roche-Posay Antihelios Tinted Mineral. It's a mineral sunscreen. It blends in really well though. You can use it underneath your makeup if you wear makeup. For moisturizers with sunscreen, I like Aveeno Positively Radiant because it also addresses any brown spots. Also CeraVe AM is a good one. Both of these are at the pharmacy and very affordable. Your nighttime moisturizer, obviously you don't need to apply something with SPF at night. You just want it to replace some of the barrier components that are lost from face washing. And so the moisturizer should contain ceramides or hyaluronic acid or urea. And then niacinamide is often commonly included in moisturizers because it helps with wrinkles, brown spots, acne, you name it. I like uh, CeraVe PM, the Ordinary Natural Moisturizing Factors in HA, as well as Tatcha, the water cream, if you wanna go a little more expensive. So is that it? So that is the bare minimum basics. That is what you should be doing no matter what, whether you're pregnant, not pregnant, have acne, not have acne. So if you just do these basic things, which is really just wash your face, moisturize sunscreen, you are going to be in really great shape and will set you up for success down the road. But then what is all this talk about retinols and tretinoin? So who should be using that? Should you start using a retinoid in your 20s? Now, there's a lot of factors that go into deciding whether or not to use a retinoid in your 20s. So the first is, do you have acne? So if you have acne, then I definitely recommend using a retinoid, even starting as early as your teenage years, and that can be a dapoline, which is over the counter, or see a dermatologist to get a prescription retinoid like tretinoin. If you don't have acne, then it may be worthwhile starting an over the counter retinol in your 20s, probably your mid to late 20s, when you start to see some changes in your skin, but really haven't developed your first wrinkles yet. And this is really gonna help prevent wrinkles and brown spots and signs of aging down the road. Now it is not easy using a retinol, which is why it's not something you jump right into. I have a whole video just on picking the right retinoid and retinol, how to start it, how to use it, how to tolerate it. They're not easy. But I do promise if you're consistent, you are gonna see results and it's gonna make a big difference down the line. Now the caveat is the 20s is when a lot of us are starting to have children. You cannot use retinol or retinoids when you're pregnant because of risk of birth defects. So this can certainly play a role in whether or not you're gonna start a retinol in your 20s. If you cannot, if you're pregnant through half of your 20s, it is not a big deal to start in your 30s. You're not gonna be behind. So don't get stressed out about like having to start a retinol and feeling like you're missing out. Don't worry, wait until your babies are done. You're gonna catch right up. So which product do I recommend? If you have acne prone skin or you wanna see results really fast, then use Adapalene, which is over the counter, or talk to your dermatologist about getting a prescription for tretinoin or other prescription retinoids. 
For everyone else, I recommend using a retinol 1%. I like this one by The Ordinary 1% Retinol as well as this one by Rock. So what about exfoliation? You know, honestly, your skin really does exfoliate itself and that process tends to be working still relatively well in your 20s, so you don't tend to have a lot of that dull complexion that you get as you get older. Now, if you want to get that really radiant glowing complexion, you may consider adding an exfoliant a few times a week, anywhere from like one to three times. You wanna use either an AHA or a BHA chemical exfoliant, and that can be like glycolic acid. I like the one by The Ordinary, glycolic acid 7% solution. This one by Glytone, 10 to 20% cream. And then a lot of people like Paula's Choice AHA, BHA. You really don't wanna overdo this though because you're apt to get a lot of irritation, especially when you're younger and your skin's still kind of exfoliating itself pretty well. Other optional things to add to your skincare regimen include a vitamin C serum, which can help with brown spots, wrinkles. It's an antioxidant. There are a lot of them out there. I use one by New Organic. It's very good for sensitive skin. SkinCeuticals is great, but very expensive. I really like Dr. Brenner's as a cheaper dupe for uh, the SkinCeuticals. If niacinamide is not already in your moisturizer, you may consider adding a niacinamide 4 to 10%. A lot of skincare already contains niacinamide in it, so just check your ingredients. If you have brown spots or melasma, do check out my video on dealing with hyperpigmentation and melasma because there are lots of separate other treatments that you can consider adding to your regimen. Again, melasma can be really, really common in your 20s because again, it's triggered by hormones and so it can often happen during pregnancy. There are some treatments that are safe and not during pregnancy. So check out that video if that's the case for you. And remember, skincare isn't just on what you put on your skin. It's really important to also make lifestyle choices. You need to get enough sleep. You need to get drink enough water. Um, you need to eat well and have a diet that's balanced where you're getting enough protein, omega-3 fatty acids, and a wide variety of vitamins and minerals. And even just saying, trying to do things to mitigate stress. So like exercising and doing yoga and meditation, all these things are really going to help the appearance of your skin. So there you have it. This is the perfect skincare routine for your 20s. By following these steps and maintaining a really good routine, you're gonna set yourself up for success down the line. You're gonna have radiant, youthful skin for years to come. I've included a link in the descriptions for the products that I listed here. And if you've tried some of these tips and have specific recommendations for products, certainly leave those in the comments so that other people can benefit. This is Dr. Abby Waldman, be well.